Howdy folks! In this discussion we're going to talk about depth perception. So you've got the two retinas and their 2D surfaces in the back of your eye. How do we perceive 3D? We use what's called a cue approach. There are a number of cues in your visual field that your brain uses to tell you about how far and close things are from you and a combination of these cues gives us 3D perception. There are two categories of depth perception cues, binocular and monocular. Binocular cues use both eyes, by two ocular eyes, whereas monocular cues only need one eye, mono one ocular eye. So it's a common misperception that if you lost the sight in one eye, you would lose depth perception. That's not true. You lose binocular depth perception, but you still have a lot of cues. There are actually more monocular depth perception cues than binocular ones. The two binocular cues are retinal disparity and convergence. For this, you're going to need to get out your finger. To demonstrate retinal disparity, I want you to hold your finger up in front of your face, close your left eye, and cover up something on this screen. Now switch eyes, keeping your finger in place. And switch back and forth. You can see that the retinal image for each of your eyes is slightly different. When you have both eyes open, binocular, that slight difference, disparity, in the two images, your brain uses that to compute depth. The second binocular cue is convergence. This is a neuromuscular cue and you're going to need your finger again. So hold your finger up out at arm's length, focus on the tip of your finger with both eyes, slowly bring the tip of your finger closer and closer and closer until you touch your nose, leaving your eyes open. That pressure that you feel in your eyes as they cross when it gets close enough, that's called a neuromuscular cue and your brain uses that neuromuscular information to tell you how far away or how close a thing is to you. The stronger that pressure that you feel, the closer the object is to you. Now let's talk about the monocular cues. Sometimes these are called pictorial depth cues because, as we'll see at the end, when you're looking at pictures or paintings, the depth cues that are involved there are all monocular. The first monocular depth cue is linear perspective. You see this around you all the time. The simple perception that parallel lines tend to get closer together to converge the farther away they get. Now you know that in this photo, for example, you can measure with your fingers how wide the road is in terms of retinal displacement at the bottom and then when you move your fingers up to the very top of the road that you can see, obviously that's a much smaller retinal displacement in terms of sensation on your eye, on your retina. But you don't for an instant think that the road just got narrower. Instead, your brain sort of perceptually magnifies the road in the distance, even though the sensation is smaller in terms of retinal displacement. You don't perceive the road as smaller. Instead, you perceive that smaller retinal displacement as meaning that part of the road is farther away from you. Relative size is a second monocular cue. This one simply means that whenever we are looking at objects in the visual field that we know are similar to each other, we know that they're of a similar size, the one that looks smaller will be judged to be farther away. Not actually smaller, just more distant. Third is interposition enter between position location. What interposition tells us is that objects that cover up other objects, cover them up or block part of our view, the ones that are doing the covering up are closer, the ones that are blocked or occluded or covered up are further away. Aerial perspective, also known as relative clarity, simply means that your brain judges things that look hazier are farther away. More distance, more haziness. With texture gradient, your brain reasons that you can see a lot of detail in stuff that's close up to you. Things that are near you have a coarse texture or grain. As those same kinds of things get farther away from you, the texture or grain becomes finer, less detail. 
instead of interpreting the finer detailed objects as being different objects, your brain interprets that as a distance cue telling you that those objects are simply farther away. Finally, motion parallax is the perception that objects closer to you are moving past you faster than objects that are farther away from you when you're actually the one that's moving. Now remember when I said pictorial cues. I want you to look at this painting and see if you can identify some of the monocular pictorial cues, distance cues, depth cues that we just discussed. And I want you to note that artists for thousands of years, before we even knew that there were monocular cues, have been using these tricks of perception that your brain accomplishes to help the world make sense to you, to also help their paintings look like they have real depth. 2D canvas, 3D image. Check out the moon illusion. Notice that even in this little video, hopefully for most of you at least, the moon appears to be larger when it's closer to the horizon. This is because near the horizon we have depth cues and those depth cues don't exist when the moon is up high in the sky. We don't have anything to compare it to. Now in this case the illusion is your brain is continuing to try to adjust for distance by magnifying your perception of the size of the moon which is the farthest thing away from you. But in reality the moon is not changing size it's just placing the same amount of space on the retina. It's not bigger at the horizon. It's simply that at the horizon you've got depth cues. You can see them here, inner position, relative size of the fence posts, things that you know are big. You also know from depth cues are closer to you than the moon. Therefore the moon must be even bigger because it's more distant. The moon gets magnified. You experience the illusion. Thanks and gig'em.